this in a minute, Josh. Try it. Try it again. Look. <laughs> thank you, God. I just thank you, God, for just you and part of God. I pray that everyone here, God, <laughs> Holy Spirit, that you just thump parts tonight, God, that you rock people you love, that you just give people a passion to see you, God, yes, to see you glorify, yes, to see you manifest, God, as a lifestyle, God. Yes, Lord. Not just occasion, but <laughs> us living in you, God, yes. just sharing life with you, God. We thank you, we praise you. And the Holy Spirit, just possess us, God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I have, so I have a little bit of room and I'm a pacer, so <laughs> let's see how this works out. But yeah, it was cool. On the way up here, we uh, Chelsea was hungry, so we stopped by Taco Time. and I was on my phone, and then the lady was like leaned over, and she's like, you look like my son, and started just making comments and stuff like that. And I have like, Holy Spirit gave me the gift of selective hearing. When I, someone starts talking to me randomly, I just hear, bless me. <laughs> so, so I just prayed and I heard she had back pain so I asked her and I prayed like Chelsea prayed for her and she just started breaking down crying and it was weird because she's like then she started just talking about her son like playing football and this and that and it, when we're driving away like all of a sudden Holy Spirit downloaded what really happened she was too emotional. She said she didn't know if her back was healed or not because she was just overwhelmed with emotion. But um, what happened was she looked at me and then God reminded her of her son and she's worried about her son's salvation. She's really just burdened about that. And that's really on her mind because she said she was a strong believer. And then the fact that I would step out and just ask her if her back hurt and just pray for her, she broke down crying because that was a picture to her of what her son would look like on fire for the Lord. And she said it was confirmation. So that was just, Amen. it was just Holy Spirit. And it's funny because we don't realize when we're just living in Jesus, we don't even realize the impact we have on the world around us. It's a lot of people that blew my mind. Like I didn't even know, like with saw me or I didn't even know anything. They saw me pray for someone that just filled them with boldness or like a hope or a peace, you know? It's like when we step out and we start actually living this thing out, when we live out the gospel, there's some more. Okay, awesome. See, it, it's powerful. Yeah. Now, I'm like, um, I've been witnessing probably about five, six years now, just out in Portland, Vancouver. Just God's just really giving me a, like just a burden on my heart to see people know Him, to see. Him. And it's funny when I first started witnessing, the only thing God put on my heart to do was just go bless people, go pray for people. That's it. No strings attached. And it's funny because I would see people just dramatic healings and people getting killed on 82nd Street, and, and all of a sudden I'd tell people, and then all of a sudden people would be like, "Well, did you get them saved?" Like, no, but God healed them. They're like, well, everything you did is in vain. Like, I didn't do anything. Jesus, you healed them, you know? And it's funny because there's all this pressure. Like, I realized, like, a lot of people have these expectations and all these things they like to pin on it, you know? Like, Jesus says, love people. That's it. A new commandment I give you, that you love others as I love you. And by this, all will know that you're my disciples. Right. See, when we live the reality of that in our daily life, we don't need to tack things onto it. Holy Spirit does an amazing job. I find people follow Jesus a lot more when they fall in love with him than when they're forced into it. See, with, with sharing the gospel, I, I find it's easier just to become it. Yes. You see, I, I want my life to represent what the gospel means, you know? I want to be a picture of it. And I'm so, I want to be so wrapped up on with the gospel, my life becomes the trap. Amen. You know, Amen. You know it, it's funny because the way I share the gospel to people just depends on the person I'm talking to. Right. Because it's not about, okay, I got my gospel track in my head ready to give out. It's... It's I love Jesus. I know what he did. I know the work he did in my life, and my life's a testimony of the gospel. Amen. See, I was a drug addict, a meth addict, on the streets, into witchcraft, into all kinds of stuff, and God's love crashed in on me, just changed everything. Amen. Amen. So it's like, and I realize it's funny because in that place, like um, God just gave me this heart for people, like where I can't, I don't judge people where they're at. I like when people are struggling with sin or struggling or lost in the world, like. 
how could I? Like, I was just, that's just messed up. That's right on. And God never said shame on you for that. He just said, look, I love you. I got better for you. Are you done? So, so my method of evangelism is just to show people that God's got better for them, demonstrate them, let them taste and see the Lord is good, and plant seeds everywhere I go. It's, it's no strings attached. See, Jesus died for my sins without strings attached. He didn't ask my permission for it. He just did it and said, look, I love you, and I have this for you. you just take it. It's yours. So, so I... I'm trying to look like Jesus, you know? So when we go witnessing, we really don't have a formula. We just go out and love people. Simple as that. We <laughs> we find out their needs. We pray for them. We bless them if we could provide for them. Any, anything we could do to go out of our way to become love for, to the person in front of us, that's the clearest picture of the gospel they're ever going to see. It's funny. This, uh, with discipleship, the, like, I'm blown away by how much God's highlighting that. And it's, and it's, it's funny because like a lot of people are trying to figure out what that looks like. That's like the new buzzword in the churches and the Holy Spirit's bringing it up. But everybody's looking for this cookie cutter formula that's going to work. The same thing with sharing the gospel. Everyone wants the cookie cutter salesman pitch that's going to bring them into discipleship, bring them, get them say a prayer. But really it's not about that. It's about living in relationship with God and people seeing your life and wanting that. See, when people fall in love with Jesus, they're, they're better disciples. They want to be disciples. Amen. Yeah. So, ah, it's so good. So, one thing God put on my heart to share, let me see. Ah, I could reach it. Okay. Let me test something. Okay, I can stand here. <laughs> so, Mark chapter 4. It's funny that there's all those prophetic words about like planting seeds because that's just what I'm what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Today. See, I know there's a, a huge thing about finding the man of peace in an area, you know, but, which that's awesome. But I, I've seen people look so hard for the man of peace they forget everybody else around them and they never find him, you know. See, our job is just to plant seeds everywhere they go. It doesn't matter what kind of soil we're planting it on. That's not our job to decide what kind of soil it is. It's our job to plant seeds. If we're sitting there when we go out witnessing, we're judging people if they're good soil or not good soil. We're not going to plant anything. So, so check this out. Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 2. It says, And he taught them many things by parables, and he said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, the sower went out to sow. And it happened, as he sowed, that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell by the stony ground, where it didn't have much earth, and immediately it sprang up, and it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, and it withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Another seed fell on the ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, some a hundred. And he said, he who has ears, let him hear. Now here's the thing. The sower went out to sow. He's, obviously he sowed everywhere. That's our job. See, the sower didn't just say, okay, where's the good ground? Lord, is that one good ground? No. Nah. He went out and he sowed everyone who would receive. If people who don't receive, just wipe the dust off your feet. Go on. And also, I love the fact that we can't really see the depth of the seeds we're planted. Like, I love that. Like, that's something we've been going out a lot and just praying for just countless people, endless people, just going out loving on people, you know? And, and it's crazy because I've seen people who a year ago had a radical encounter with the Lord that appeared to harden their heart towards it a year later give their lives to the Lord. I, I've seen people... I've also seen people say a prayer right off the bat, and then the next day they're ten times worse, and they completely run away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but it's crazy, because when you go out to an area, you want to see a place transform. You go out, and you start sowing seeds, sowing seeds, sowing seeds, sowing seeds, and it's going to sprout. Mm -hmm. It's going to it's going to spread. It's going to grow. See, the explanation is the sower sows the word. We got the Word living in us. We have Jesus living in us. That's right on. Come on. 
See, when we speak from his heart, we share his gospel. It says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's right. See, prophecy releases a grace that transforms things. So when we go out and we start sharing the gospel, it's prophetic and actually changes hearts. It plants seeds deep. When we do it in love, it plants them so deep they can't get rid of it. <laughs> but it says, the sower sowed the word. And the ones on the wayside... See, when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. You know, there's going to not there's going to be people who are going to get radically rocked, and then the devil's going to take that away from their heart. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people who you know they encounter God, but then it's just the enemy. It's just got them bound up. Doesn't mean they're not going to be saved in the future. Just that time. See, it's not our job to say, "Oh, he's bound by Satan. I can't minister to him." That's right on. It's good. Too late. <laughs> it's too late. It's coming. See, you know, there, there are people who, it, it says, the, the likewise are ones who sown on the stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it in gladness. And it's funny because we make a habit because, because we get performance based about evangelism. So we look <laughs> for the ones that's going to spring up immediately. Yeah. We look for the ones who are going to say our prayer and then we that's can right. feel all good. That's right. You know, we count our souls and really we have no idea how many because half of them fall away from the Lord the next day. Mm -hmm. right. See, it says they have no root in themselves so they endure for a time afterward when tribulation or persecution arises from the word's sake. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing. If you got the, these seeds cause persecution, these seeds, the enemy sees that seed, it's going to rise up against you. That's right. You see, we're going to be persecuted for the gospel. That's a promise. Yeah, that's see, right. that's, and that's not, that's life. That's just something. See, it's our relationship with God that keeps us grounded. Mm -hmm. See, that's the root. Mm -hmm. So, so if these people don't get a relationship, a real relationship with God established in their heart, it doesn't matter what they confess or what they say. Guess what? So tribulation comes up, they're, they're out. Mm -hmm. See? It says, immediately they stumble. Now they're the ones who are sown among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the, and the desires for other things end up choking the word and it becomes unfruitful. Mm -hmm. So there's people who have the word in them, they receive it, but then it's just all the stresses of life, the this, the that causes them from growing it. They can't grow because the, the cares of this world weighs them down. See that? It's good. But, I mean, it's not good for them, but it's good as the word. <laughs> it says, but they're the ones who are sown on good ground. These hear the word and accept it and bear fruit some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. See, we... We, with evangelism in America, it's kind of like a lot of churches have this performance base where we want the numbers, we want what looks good, we want what looks appealing. But if you can see by that parable Jesus gave, it's not always going to look like that. What you see on the surface and what you see sprout up first isn't always what's going to last. That's right. See, Jesus isn't after the plant, he's after the fruit. That's right on, man. That's good. See, the seed's planted, but it's all about the fruit. He, Jesus said, this, you know, this is my will, that you go and bear fruit. That's right. That's right. See, and we only bear fruit abiding in Him. Abide in me and you'll bear much fruit. It says that in John chapter 15. So, this relate, how do you abide in Jesus? Relationship, intimacy. You fall in love with Jesus. The, I, I'm convinced the issue with the seeds there is the ones that plant on good soil are the ones who fell in love with Jesus. They abided in Him. They realized this thing called relationship and intimacy with God. Yeah. And they fell in love with Him. And then all of a sudden, just fruit comes out of that. It's Amen. easy. Amen. That's right. Ah, it's so good. But, but that also shows, like, we have this checklist. Are you saved or are you not saved? And we have this weird checklist. Or are you in? Are you out? And I do believe strongly in being born again. But being born again is you're born into intimacy with God where God sets up camp inside you. He lives yeah. in you. Yeah. And He imparts grace through your life, which grace is Harris in the Greek, which means the divine influence in the heart and its expression throughout the life. So to be truly saved is God lives in you. Yeah. You live in Him. That's right. That's right. See, true, to be saved is just an ongoing relationship with God. That's right. See, I was praying. I was like, God, what's the difference? Because I kept seeing, I, I, I remember I get, I, when I first started witnessing, I, I kind of 
pressured this girl into saying the prayer and she gave her life to the Lord and then oh, a month later all of a sudden she was just worse off and I'm just like what is going on but then there's one guy where I told him I, I, his stomach got healed and then I told him I'm like dude when you're out by yourself just say Jesus I want to know who you are come into my life about a month later I see him wearing a Jesus church and, he, or a shirt, and he's completely changed I'm like God what's the difference you know what makes the difference and the Holy Spirit just gave me this verse it's uh, John chapter 17. Verse 3. It says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ who meets through. Hallelujah. So eternal life depends on knowing God. Mm -hmm. The word invokes intimacy. The same word in the like of a husband and a wife. That's the same same context. It's like knowing God in, in, in an intimate way where God lives in us. We know Him. We, we In a personal relationship with God, we actually just bear fruit. It's easy. That's we right. don't have to force things. That's right. And it's funny because here, here's the thing. When we go out and love people, God backs us up. And this is kind of something God's given me for break, just seeing just dramatic increase in breakthrough with healing with everything is realizing we don't have to twist God's arm into it. That's right on. <laughs> See, in this relationship with God, it just becomes easy because God loves people, so I love people, and then God shows up and backs it up. That's right. And that's if right. he does it, guess what? I get humbled, so I get more grace. God gives grace to the humble, so I can walk in more. But I realized, I, I, it's funny because when we first started going out witnessing, I would pr like we would pray for an hour and we would like press in and get really worked up emotionally and then go out. And we'd see some things go down, but it, it wasn't like it is now. It's like now it's just kind of we go there and we're in constant prayer throughout the week, throughout the day. It doesn't right. stop. It doesn't shut off. It's not like I have to work myself up. I'm already there. So it's like we go out and it's just, okay, Dad, what do you want to do? Right. Let's go. Let's go bring this thing. Amen. It's amazing because it's like when we live our life in intimacy with God and, and when we just become just an amazing sower and amazing water, you know, because that's it. Like you're not even responsible for the increase God is. That's right. See, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.6, Paul said, you know, um, Apollos planted, I watered, but God brings the increase. That's right. So it's his job to bring the increase. We can't measure success by how many people say our prayer. We can't measure right success on. by how many people we get on our ministry. We measure success by how much we love them because that's the only commandment he really gave us. Love them, share the gospel, the good news. They've right they been set free. They just need to step into it. That's right. That's right. See, Jesus paid the price for everything. It doesn't matter where they're at. That's the beauty of the gospel. God took all their junk so they could have an intimate relationship with him. That's right. That's amazing. Because when people fall in love with him, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. It's over. Like, like, like seriously, I'm finding the Christian life is easiest to live out when you're like completely in love with Jesus. When you, the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more everything becomes easy. Yeah. It's, good. it's not like a hassle to avoid things because you just you're so in love with God. You're like, why would I want that? Exactly. That would take me out of this. Like, yeah. I, I love Jesus. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But it's cool. Like, oh man. So I want, ah, the, um, it's funny, my friend was over today, he cut my hair, he had no idea I was speaking tonight, but he just kind of came over, he's like, yeah, I heard in my heart that uh, you were speaking, and he came over, cut my hair, I'm like, yes, <laughs> see God, he cares about my hair, <laughs> but yeah, and he reminded me of a testimony I forgot about, but this was just amazing, we we basically went out to Saturday Market. I don't even remember what happened that day. Like, just every time we go out, crazy stuff happens. But when we were coming back, we are at a holiday park right in front of the back station. And there's this uh, Asian girl and two uh, Hispanic kids just hanging out, you know. And I'm like, hey, can I pray for you guys? And the two Hispanic kids were like, no, nah, we're good. And, you know, I'm, I'm good. And I asked them if they knew Jesus. And they both said, yeah. And then I look at the Asian girl, and she was a Buddhist. And... She said she was a Buddhist, and then God started showing me how she feels like she's unseen, and like just all this stuff about her character just downloaded. And I just started speaking to her, and she broke down crying. It was God just rocked her, and then she started encountering God's presence and God's love, and it was just like such. It was one of those like just intimate moments where it's just like wow, like 
there's just some there's something about like we have the privilege of seeing God rock people. Amen. To seeing a life change, a life change. Yes, amen. Like I love that. I love the I love this like one of my passions is seeing that switch in people too. Like, I love seeing people come alive to the reality of the gospel because they're dead yeah. without it. They're dead Amen. without Jesus. So, but when you see them in, in Jesus, they come alive. Like, something happens. Something changes when they really fall in love with Jesus. That's right. See, like, uh, we were out witnessing, and um, this was a couple weeks ago, and it's funny because we went to the hospital. And like there's like very, nobody there to pray for, so we uh, ended up half our team went to Walmart. This is in Vancouver, and then we went to the mall. But then we realized there's a Walmart on the way to the mall. We're like how's that? What? Okay, let's go. So we went in. Um, Holly, this girl Holly, prayed over this lady in the middle of the aisles, and she got healed of a migraine. And while that was going on, the guy like stalking the meat, his back got healed, and then. We we're walking out, and this guy on our team, he's never really gotten words of knowledge. He gets the sharp pain in his back, and he sees the guy walk by. He's like, dude. So him and my wife go in, pray for him. He gets healed, and then his uh, girlfriend gets rocked. And while that's going on, I see, I see this uh, couple hanging outside, and they're just like uh, homeless street kids, you know? Like street, just. So I, I just felt burning for them. So I walked up, and we started talking to them. And they let us just pray to bless them, and then um, I asked the girl if she had any pain in her body, and she turns out she was just at the emergency room. We just missed her, actually. So the fact that we went there was confirmation for her that God's after her, and she had a kidney stone, and she was in a lot of pain right there. And we prayed. She felt heat fill her body, and then the kidney, the pain in the kidney stone left, and she started, like, just getting rocked, and then God downloaded all kinds of stuff about who she was, her character. Uh, the, the fact that she gave her life to the Lord when she was really younger, but then walked away from the Lord, and then she gave her life to the Lord and just... Uh, got filled with the Spirit, like just we prayed for her to get filled with the Spirit, and then she just felt fire fill her chest and just got rocked. And then her boyfriend's kind of like, him and God are not on good terms at this point, you know. <laughs> and I asked him what's going on with them, and he said he has stuff wrong with his whole body, like all over his body. I'm like, well, let's start. Where do you want to start? He said, well, my elbow. So. I figured, you know, his girlfriend just got filled with the Spirit. Let's get her in this thing. So she prays over his elbow. And he has scars on it and just tissue damage. And we actually watched the muscle form in his, like, arm, like, raise up. And he got, he started freaking out. He's like, that's crazy. He's like, it's better. He's like, I'm like, what else you got, man? Come on. Let's keep it going. He's like, yeah, but uh, it'll take more of the prayer for the other stuff. Like, really? When people say that, that's like an instant God's going to heal them. Yes, right. <laughs> like, I don't know, I take that as, yes, confirmation, Jesus, you, you're on it. So, I, he turns out his foot has a bone out of place, and we pray, and all of a sudden he's moving with no grinding, no problem with his foot, and he's like, I'm scared now. This is crazy. <laughs> like, only prayed over his shoulder, and then his shoulder got healed, and we prophesied over him, and uh, shared the gospel with him. He gave his life to the Lord, and it was weird, because, um, I saw this dark shadow lift, and then this like white mist just hit him. And as soon as he accepted the Lord in his heart, and we prayed for him to be filled, and then all of a sudden his eyes changed, his being changed, who he was changed. See, that's what I call being born again. Is not he said a prayer? Is that God sets up camp inside him, and you can see Jesus looking back out of him. That's right. that, that depression, that anxiety, that pain, that anger, all that regret, all that junk that was on him from the enemy and bound from sin was lifted off of him in a second. That's right. He got delivered and just set free in the love of God. You see, that's what I call salvation. Yeah. That's right. And here, here's something like I'm real big about. Like um, I remember when I first started seeing healings. Like I was, uh, I lived on Mill Plain. I was just walking to work and praying. I started seeing people getting healed, then um, I start counting. I'm like, wow, I've seen like six people get healed now. And the Holy Spirit's like, stop counting. That's right on. So I take that in everything. I don't know how many people I've seen give their lives to the Lord because that's, it's God brings the increase. I can't save people. That's right. If I could, I'd probably die on the cross, but I didn't. Jesus had to do that for me, you know? That's right on. See, and uh, same thing with healing. I can't heal anybody. Jesus does. If I could heal people, I'd be a doctor. I, I just can't. I don't. We don't have that ability, but we have the ability to know God because God paid all their junk. And the more we know Him, the more we can represent Him to the world around us. That's right. 
He's good. You see, we know he's good. We know he's a healer. We know he loves people. He's a restorer. We know that he paid for all the junk that the enemy could hold on to. So in that, we get to see people set free. Amen. See, and it's all credit to him. It's everything. It's, he gets all the credit because he lives in us, you know? It's good. It's a good gospel. It really is good news. Yes, it is. The best. So, yeah. Uh, so, Lord, thank you, God. Here it is. Yes, yeah, I feel like God's right now, like someone's just getting released. I just feel like wow. really intense. <laughs> so more God, more. Yeah. More. I just thank you, God. I just pray that you release a passion for evangelism. Yeah. Amen. Just thank you, God. It's really funny because like we've got things like ah. I'm so glad the church in America is waking up. That's We're right. waking up and realizing this, yes. you know? I'm seeing more and more people like just wake up to the reality of the gospel and wake up to the reality of just intimacy with God. It's cool when you like go witnessing and you prophesy over somebody. He's like, dude, you're the fourth person this week who's told me that. Yeah. Just yeah. random people on the street. I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. Amen. It's amazing because I'm like, I've met so many people that are actually just taking this to heart where it's not just, uh, it's it's not about me being the man of God. That's right. It, it's about all of us That's being right. possessed yeah. by Jesus. Yeah. It's cool. It's a corporate thing. We get to enjoy this everywhere we go. That's right. So, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And it, it's crazy because, and I know the word evangelism scares a lot of people because what they think of evangelism is they think somebody with a microphone shouting at people, repent or go to hell. And I don't see that in the gospel. I don't see that as evangelism. I see Jesus talking to the woman at the well that nobody yeah, else could talk to. That's a picture of evangelism That's where right. Jesus reads her mail but doesn't hold her sin against her. He didn't right. even condemn her for it. That's right. He's, he showed her he knew it and then explained, look, I'm the way. That's right. That's right. That's right. She turned in the greatest evangelist there. She's <laughs> the testimony of Jesus. That's evangelism. See, and I found, see, ah, it's so good. Like, I, I was started talking about ways we share the gospel. The way I generally share the gospel is just, I'll either give my testimony or I'll tell them, like, look, Jesus paid for all your junk so you can know him in a personal way. And I'll explain, and then if they, when, I'll explain identity, righteousness, right off the bat. Because that's huge. It's just understanding when you come to the Lord, you're a brand new creation. The old junk is dead. It's cut off. That's right. It doesn't exist. That's right. it's, it literally is a figment of our imagination. That's right. Like literally. That's right. That's right. See, that's the flesh. It's it's the mind frame of a previous life. It's dead. Yeah. But yeah. So. So. Like a, okay, this picture just came to my mind, so I want to share this testimony. All right, so we were at um. Uh, Pioneer Square, right? And there's this uh, girl just hanging out there. And, like, it was funny because I didn't realize she had two other guys ministering to her, but she was just covered in cuts. Just, like, I'm talking, like, gashes here. Like, like literally, she must have had probably 20, 40 cuts on her arms or legs or chest, like, everywhere, you know? And stitches and just really demonized and just a lot of issues, you know? So I just, hey, can I pray for you? And she was like really shocked that I asked her because two guys are sitting there ministering to her, you know? And it was cool because we just started counseling her and ministering to her and just loving on her and like just God started just giving us words for you. You know, it was crazy because the two guys that were witnessing to her were listening to the Spirit too. So, so it wasn't like this weird clash of this is my way of doing it, this is your way. It was instantly in the spirit where what I would say, Holy Spirit would speak something else through him and this guy would add on something that would just right. yeah. further pound what God was trying to do. And it's like, it was just crazy because she's like, all right, I want to stop cutting. I don't want to stop being by. I don't want to stop this and this and this. And I just told her, I said, look, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not trying to get you to quit anything. I'm just trying to get you to know Jesus. And See freedom because when you, if you really know Jesus, He changes you because He's holy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. See, it says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God." That's right. Yeah. 
See, that purity is everything. It's huge. Yeah. That's right. You see, when we don't have that purity, that holiness in our life, and when we're living in sin, when we're living in just junk, we can't see God because that junk's in the way blocking our vision. And then what we what we prophesy, what we speak, and what we think about God becomes distorted. That's right. See, I'm into knowing God. I'm into like following Him. So it's just God just pounded holiness on my heart. But I realized that holiness is a product of intimacy. Yes. Yes. See, it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's right. So you should produce holiness if you're listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, yes. it goes. It should just go without saying. But but here's something. So my, we just basically was working with her. We realized she had unforgiveness for her mom because she had a lot of stuff going on in her life. And like literally, we spent like four hours with her, just loving on her and just blessing her. And it was crazy. And then at that time, um, Chelsea in the mirror, like this guy like whistled on him, and they came up to him and oh yeah, and led him to the Lord and got him set free from a lot of money. And, then he started praying for the sick right off the bat, just coming around with us and just hanging out with us. And he's like, wow, I've never seen anybody like you guys. You see, when we start living out the gospel, it, it's attractive. Like Jesus, he's called the desire of nations. Like he's, he's amazing, you know? Jesus is beautiful. When he's seen through us, the world wants him. Because yes. the world, people are created for intimacy with God. That's yes. the reason why we're created back yes. in the garden. So when people see us living in this relationship with God and loving people and literally becoming the body of Christ to the world around us, they want it. Yeah. Right on. We do. So, so it was cool because, well, with that girl, I, like, we ended up just spending time with her and then afterward, just, uh, we had a role and she was completely different. She went from manifesting demons to getting a lot of deliverance going on. The next day she gave me a call and she said, I'm out of church and I'm getting baptized today. She said, I'm laying everything down. I'm quitting being a bisexual. I'm quitting this and quitting that. She said, I'm giving my whole life to Jesus. Amen. I haven't heard from her since, but... That confession coming out of someone who at first wouldn't even let us pray for her, and she was pulling out her hair because she'd like be like manifesting demons and stuff, and just seeing just someone that in that much bond is set free like that. It's just amazing. It's mind blowing. We we have the blessing. It's it's not like a we must do this stuff. We get to. We get a partner with God. We get to see God rock people with His love. Amen. That's, ah, that's such a beautiful thing when we see lives just get transformed, get changed. It's crazy. Like, um, like I've seen people, like, I remember one girl, I prayed for a shoulder, you know. I had no idea. Um, she, she, she was, uh, this was actually at Multnomah campus. And um, she had her arm in a sling, and I prayed for her shoulder, and her shoulder got healed. And the next day, I'm seeing her, like, holding plates with her, a broken collarbone. <laughs> well, was a broken collarbone. Right, amen. A week later, people just bounce around me. They're like, did you heal so-and-so? I'm like, no. I'm like, <laughs> you know, they're just kind of like hounding around me. I'm like, they're like, oh, we just found out she was going to commit suicide. Wow. And that encounter stopped. You have no idea, like, the impact that we could have on the world yeah. around us when yeah. we're just living out this gospel. Right. See, yeah. and really it comes down to where... Our lives, our intimacy with God is destruction for the enemy all everywhere around. Amen. Good. See, um, I want to bring a context of spiritual warfare into the gospel because I'm talking about going out loving people and sharing the gospel. I'm, I'm convinced that that's the greatest assault on the kingdom of darkness there is. Yes, yeah. amen. See, a lot of people get hyped up when they hear the word spiritual warfare and they're like, Okay, let's uh, huddle in the closet and we'll shout at the demons over Portland. And, and you're coming down, you know? Stay where you are. <laughs> See, I'm realizing when we become love and we go, the enemy falls. See, Jesus told his disciples, go out, heal the sick, you know, in Luke chapter uh, 10. And the 70 comes back and they're rejoicing, you know? They're like, yes, we we're like seeing even demons subject. And Jesus, is like, well, I saw Satan fall like lightning. You know? <laughs> When we go, the kingdom of darkness just collapses. It falls Amen. and we manifest the right kingdom. We manifest the kingdom of heaven. You see, when we release the love of God in somebody, it just completely breaks off condemnation. It breaks off the hooks from the enemy. And it destroys the works of the devil. See, suicide's a cop out from the devil. That's right. So with that one girl who gave her life to the Lord, guess what? Me just loving her and just stepping out to pray for her, it just completely rocked. 
like rock her and destroy the works of the enemy in her Amen. life. To, and then that girl with cuts all around her, you know? That's someone who people would just say is unlovable. That's why, like, that story touches me because that was like, that was a stretch for me, like, seeing, because I was, I remember praying for her, like, just battling in my mind, like, wow, because, you know, like, you see people in that much bondage, and it's like, it's, it's hard to see breakthrough because there's a huge warfare for them. Right but then seeing her call me the next day like blew my mind. But that spiritual warfare, it's stopping for someone. It's loving somebody. Yeah, yeah. It's becoming the hands and feet of Jesus. And that can only be done in a place of intimacy with God. Yeah. You see, what God commanded us to do is He could only do. That's right. It's kind of funny. We can't do the Christian life in our own strength. We can't do any of it. we got to abide in Him and He does it through us. That's grace. That's right on. <laughs> it's, it's so good. We just fall in love with Him. He made it really easy. And then out of our relationship with Him, when we go places, we carry the presence of God. It changes the atmosphere. We've seen whole areas transformed. Like we're, like just giving an example, like um, Lloyd Center, when we first went there, we literally would have people cuss us out. Every time we went there, we would have people manifest demons just and all kinds of crazy stuff nonstop. Like it's and witnessing it was, it's just so many crazy encounters there, and then now it's just it feels like a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. You go there and like um, you don't see gangs that much anymore. It's like you don't see the garbage you used to see. It's rare to find someone manifesting a demon there. Like it, like it used to be. Every time you go there, you have to deal with a lot of stuff at once. Mm -hmm. You see, and I'm seeing that starting to happen in other areas of Portland. You know. Yay! And it's just amazing because I realize when we go and we start manifesting the kingdom of God, when we start loving people, when we start just planting seeds everywhere, Come on. Come on. you see, when we release the kingdom of God, it battles the whole area. It's not just for the person you're talking to. It's literally changing the atmosphere. And when we change the atmosphere, it's like the influence of the kingdom of heaven. You see, this world is under the influence of the devil, under the kingdom of darkness, you know. But when we go, we start manifesting this gospel and truth. When we start loving the person in front of us, it actually changes it. And it establishes God's dominion. You see, the kingdom of God is Christ's dominion. So Christ becomes the dominant force in that area. And the influence of the kingdom of God just starts sweeping through it. Amen. Amen. People start changing. You see, there's that passage about saying the God of this world's blinded them. And and that that's crazy because I realize a lot of people, we don't realize how much of their thoughts and how much of their thinking is actually from the enemy. Yeah. See, but I realize when we start going to an area over and over again and it's just seeing like, does God just move a place? Mm -hmm. Like people's minds become more open and more receptive because they can think from themselves apart from the influence of the enemy. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It was funny, a good example of that, we were just at a PSU campus just loving on people. It was cool, like this Mormon guy walked by. Uh, no, I'm not a Mormon, a Muslim. And uh, prayed for, got a word over his knee, and he's like, how did you know that? And I prayed for his knee, his knee got healed. And he's like, but I'm Muslim. Like, it's cool, I love you, man. You're amazing. Jesus. You know? And then, yeah, we just had all of us, me, you, you, you weren't there. Okay. And, but, People were just getting rocked, and we found out there's a bowling alley, so we went down like underneath PSC oh, campus. So we went down there, started loving on people, and this uh, guy's shoulder got healed. And it was just, it was just a fun day, and then it was, but it was crazy because there's a lot of resistance at PSC campus where you could just feel it in the atmosphere, you know. But then we went to Lloyd Center Mall, like where we've been ministering, and it's just instantly, boom, healing, 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 back to back, like everywhere. Like she, right when we got there, she prayed over a lady's. Uh, back and then her back just popped like her discs were out of place and they just popped back in place and she was freaking out and while that was going on this girl got healed of migraines and then while that was going on another guy's back got healed and then we walk inside and just carried it on inside but it was just such a difference in the atmosphere but it shows me when we start like manifesting the kingdom in the area it changes it so, so it's like God gave you everything you need to transform the city to transform Amen. the world around you that's right and it's really easy. He makes it the simplest as can be. Just go out and love people. Amen. Amen. You have Jesus, so everything that you can't do, He can. Huh. If they need healing, pray for it. Expect God to answer. You see, God gives you resources that effectively love people. Amen. See, love sometimes looks like healing to the sick, you know? That is a, that to me is a divine expression of love. That's right. See, I realize God heals people because He loves people. Amen. Love. He... It's crazy. He healed the ten lepers and only one of them returned, you know? Yeah. See, the, the point wasn't 
so they would follow him, though that is, uh, it follows the gospel, not so, um, you know, but it's really God's moved with compassion for humanity. He loves people, so he just manifests it. He shows his goodness off to the world, and he says, all right, if you want this, it's all, it's a free gift. You could have it. No strings attached. It's all yours. That's right. Just the life that you think, that, <laughs> the life you don't want anymore, throw away, because I got so much better for you. Amen. That's, That's the beauty of the gospel. It That's is. That's right. So, my Lord, Father, I just praise you and thank you for what about Yes, Father God. So we get a partner with the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, this, Brad, uh, this happened over a year ago, but this was like, this was just awesome. Like, we were at a, and a lot of you guys probably saw this video, but this, like, the video of it, people watch the video and start getting healed from watching the video. So I'm just like, what? That's so crazy. But yeah, we went to uh, Holiday Park, and there's these guys just doing dubstep and, like, dancing. It was, like, cool. We are just hanging out, and I just felt like I wanted to bless them, but I couldn't find a way in, you know. So we just kind of hung out with them, just joked with them. And then three guys were hanging out there, and, um, or there was about 10, probably 10, 12 of them, but three guys let us pray over them, and I just said, hey, do you want to experience God? They're like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So they closed their eyes and just said, the Holy Spirit, come, boom, you know? And then all of a sudden, one guy like looks back at this, and I'm like, dude, did you feel heat? He's like, yeah, something touched my arm, something touched my shoulder. I'm like, oh, that was just Jesus. And then all of a sudden, everybody else like, no, wait, what just happened? I'm all, Jesus just showed up, touched his arm. It's like, no, wait, do it to me, do it to me. <laughs> So now they're all in a circle around us and all like really in tune to what's going on, you know? Right. And, and the whole time there's some girls there that are mocking us this whole entire time. See, they're, they're making fun of us and like just kind of like bagging on us and making sounds. And But it's funny because God showed up and he captivated everybody. Amen. It was like, no, there's no, dist no distraction. God's here, you know? And it was funny because so I'm like, okay, everybody say, Holy Spirit, come. So everybody said... Holy Spirit, God. And then all of a sudden, a couple seconds go by. You see one kid sitting on the bench go. <laughs> all, all of a sudden, the, this, this little black kid, he was like hanging out. All of a sudden, he goes, oh, no, man, F that. And he just takes off, booking it, running. <laughs> And I'm like, check this out. Jesus is here. So is anybody, has anybody got any pain in your body? It's funny. This guy who just told me he had no pain in his body said, my wrist hurts. <laughs> like, oh, God showed up. Now you want that. <laughs> so I'm like, check this out. You lay, just to prove it's Jesus, you lay hands on this guy. So this kid named Chris and like lays hands on this other guy. All of a sudden, his wrist gets healed. So I have him pray over his friend's ankle. His uh, friend's uh, ankles get healed. And the kid's ankle, I have him pray over. The, it's funny because this kid made a comment like saying, isn't Jesus Neil Diamond? And he was like basically bag on it, you know. And then I have him pray over that guy's feet. And that dude's like, dude, no joke, man. No joke. This is real, you know. And then that kid who ran off finally came back, you know. He's like, man. My knee hurt. I'm like, cool, sit down. So they pray over it, and then he gets up. He's all, nah, still hurt. So I'm all, sit down. All of a sudden, it's funny because this kid, Chris, is like praying this first time he's ever seen any of this stuff, right? And he starts praying, and then he looks, and he goes, um, what is the actual spot of pain? And he's like, get into it. So they pray again, and then the kid goes like this. He goes, and then he goes and starts hitting his knee. He's like, what the? He started like tripping out, cussing, like freaking out, you know, like just Jesus just healed his knee. There's no way out of it. So I started trying to, I tried to share the gospel and the girls start like making animal noises and like literally like hardcore, like trying to distract what's going on. And Chris and this other kid gave his life to the Lord. And, and it was just amazing because it was like showing the influence of the kingdom of God just overthrowing the enemy, even when it's coming at you. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy. Like, um, and this other time we, we went, there's uh, this guy whose back got healed from scoliosis, and this girl like made a comment like, let's do a ritual and sacrifice, blah, 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 you know, trying to offend us. And then her arm got hold. Uh, Heard in a fight, we prayed over her, and all of a sudden, uh, after a couple times praying, she got healed. She's all, "This is weird. I'm going leaving." She starts walking away. So me and uh, Mira start like prophesying over, and she stops, and she's like, "How do you know that?" It's funny because I thought it was a guy. So the whole time I'm like, "Man, man, man, man." See, I'm, like accurate prophetic, just. <laughs> 
so, so she's like tripping, like, how do you know that about me? And I share the gospel. While I'm sharing the gospel, this guy comes up like, what do you think about the government? And trying to distract him, and this other guy shouting, let's blast ash into the Christian's faces, like off in the distance. And you see the devil getting mad about it, it doesn't matter. Once the kingdom of God comes, it captivates, it dominates. I don't care how dark the place is, we have Jesus. So, so she gave her life to the Lord, got filled with the Spirit. Amen. Jesus. He dominates the scene. Seriously, we have him. We're packing Jesus. In our lives. So, oh, let, let me get back to Chris. I brought him up. Check this out. So, about a month after that Chris encounter, um, like that whole like crazy like Holy Ghost showdown, all of a sudden we go up to this party, there's like 30 kids everywhere, and then we just show up and people are getting healed. Boom, boom, boom. Back to back. And then uh, it's my, my friend Chris prayed over Chris, and he gets healed again. <laughs> the same kid who gave his life to the Lord, he got healed and he got in a fight and he busted his hand. And the mercy of God said, I'm not going to hold that against you, I'll heal you. And his hand got healed. It just left an even more testament. There's people tripping on shrooms getting healed. And like it's funny because this one guy, um, he, he kind of came up mocking. He said, dude, I snorted coke and I messed up my nose. Or I snorted some, snorted some meth and messed up my nose. Could you pray for that? So I prayed for the pain to go and he started making fun of me because it didn't leave. A year later, he came to me and told me that his nose got healed and asked me to pray for him to get off drugs. Wow. Took a year for that seed to finally plant in. But, but when I prayed for him, he said nothing happened. So like I was saying, we don't know the influence. So so this Chris guy, and then we run into him again at a table, and they're all smoking pot, and then we pray, for him, and then people start getting rocked at this table, getting healed, and then Chris, it's like, dude, you guys gotta let them pray. They're crazy, you know? And it's funny, because all of a sudden, I didn't see Chris again for like a year. And I was crazy, like, God put such a burden on my heart for him, you know? And then all of a sudden, we run into him, and he's homeless, like, on the street, and he's hanging out with all the street kids. I talked to him, he's talking about how he has pain in his body, and he has. And he started describing stuff that just sounded demonic to me. So I just said, in Jesus' name, get out. And he's like, dude, I feel, like, completely better. I feel light. And then he, he said something that blew my mind. He said, the first encounter he had, he gave his life to the Lord, and we prayed for him to be filled with the Spirit. He felt fire fill his chest. He said, from that point on, he woke up in the morning, and he started feeling a presence every morning that he woke up. And he said he started to realize that this life is in form, you know. And it was just like it was just crazy because like he's confessing this, and then his buddy's like, "Man, I think Jesus is like blah blah blah," and then he starts battling that dude, like, "No, Jesus is real," like like defending Jesus to these street kids. I'm just like. What? You know? And it's crazy because here's the thing. He established relationship with God. That's what happened. You see, when he encountered God, he really brought God in his heart. And there was a change. There's a transformation. It manifested slower because sometimes it takes people to realize what they got. You know, it takes people time. So, and it's funny because... He's in the he was in the drug life and now he's like realizing that he doesn't belong there. He's not feeling like he fits in. And I told him, I said, Are you finding yourself like loving people more? He said, Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you know? I'm like, that's Jesus, man. That's like proof. And then it, I wasn't like about a month later, actually this was like a, about a week ago? Or no, a couple weeks ago. Uh Kenneth, he's here somewhere. Well anyway, we we ah, there he is. Yeah. But but yeah, we went to uh, Holiday Park, <laughs> and it was funny because I was just talking about this kid Chris, right? And it's raining, and there's like nobody at the park. And then as soon as we show up, I'm walking, and then he takes off, and he like walks up, and then he sees this kid, and he runs up to him. And I was just talking about, I hope I run into this kid, and then he runs into Chris and starts talking to him. I run back up and I start talking to him, and then. This blew my mind. He said, look, man. He said, yeah, God is real. God is so real. And I'm sick of this life. He said, I fell on heroin. And I'm sick of that stuff. I hate drugs. I, I'm not. That's not me. And I started explaining to him what it means to be a new creation. And the reason why he's having this conflict is because that's not who he is. He's called something. So he prayed with us to lay it all down. He prayed for a brand new start. He prayed to just surrender everything in his life. You see, that's someone who's captivated by the love of God. It didn't look like an instant. And like, oh, he said the prayer. He's right. I get my priority point for the day. See, it, it took continual encounter. You see, and he's still, 
I don't know where he's at now, you know. I haven't ran into him. I, I don't know how much of that stuff, but I see that heart that longs for the Lord in him. He wants Jesus. When people get captivated by the love of God, it doesn't matter. It's over, and they, they go for it. That's right. So, so it's like amazing. And God just gave us one commission, but that's it. It's just go out and love people. When we love people and just manifest the kingdom of God, it brings the gospel to such a reality to the person. Just like tonight, that lady crying. And that was just as simple as, let me bless you, let me pray for you, you know? Yep. It just changed her whole night. And I didn't even realize the depth of it until we drove away. It was like, what? Yeah, and I, I still don't even know the depth of that, you know? That's right. That's good. So we don't, like... Our lives are important to God. Our surrender to the Lord is important. Uh, us living out this gospel is important. To, and when we start living in this relationship with God, when we start living in intimacy, we become amazing waters, amazing sowers, because we're so captivated by Him, we can't help but love the person in front of us. And when that takes place, you see lives transform. you see people change. And it's easy. We get to be a part of this. It's the gospel. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Yes, amen. amen. Just your I was praying tonight about what to share with you guys, and the Lord gave me like a pretty radical experience um, about a year ago. And it took me a little bit longer than Josh to really go out. I've I've been kind of shy my whole life, and I feel like it's like the devil always kind of attacks us when we're supposed to, you know, go out for the Lord. And so it took me quite a while to really like. I guess catch on fire <laughs> and really be okay with going out and really sharing the gospel with people and like and even like the first few times like I really battled fear and so there's a couple um, I'm just gonna pray Lord I just thank you thank you for everybody here tonight God I just pray that you would just direct my speech Lord I pray that whatever you have tonight God that you would just open open my mouth and just share Lord whatever needs to be to be heard Lord that you just bless everyone here tonight in Jesus name Amen so when Josh started really going radical for the Lord I was kind of like well this is neat but I don't really know how to like surrender everything to God and Josh like all of a sudden decided I'm just going to give up everything for God and I'm going to go pray for people in the streets and I started seeing people get impacted and I, was, I wanted that but I didn't really know how and I remember one night um, I was sleeping and the Lord woke me up at like 3 in the morning <laughs> and I was just wide awake all of a sudden so I sat up in bed and it was dim in my room and I was just sitting there wide awake all of a sudden and Josh like sat up next to me and he opened his eyes and he looked at me and he said he said come to me Chelsea and it was totally not Josh it was like the Lord speaking through him and it was like a husband like and the Lord was saying like I want you to come to me I want to be intimate with you I want to have this close relationship with you and I didn't know how to do that and so for the next couple months I was just like what does that mean? Like, what does it mean, come to you? What do you want me to, like, I'll, tr I'll read my Bible more. I'll, you know, I'll pray more. And so I started doing all these works for the Lord. And I would even go out and witness with Josh, and it would be more of a work. Like, well, I'm just going to do this. And my heart wasn't really there, but I wanted to be close to God. And so I, I, I kept feeling like I was falling short all the time. I kept feeling like, well, I'm not doing enough for the Lord. You know, I'm not... You know, I'm failing here, I'm, I'm not doing enough here. And it was always like this measure of perfection that I was never measuring up to. And finally the Lord shook me again and he said, <laughs> he basically, I had this picture in my mind of like spiritual warfare and staying close to God as kind of a tug of war. Where I had this rope and I was like tugging, like trying to tug the rope over to the side of holiness and over the side of like, you know, being right with God and doing the right things and, you know, being, you know, not sinning and, 
And it was like this constant struggle of staying righteous. And then the Lord finally, very, very bluntly one day said, drop the rope. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized... All of a sudden, in this moment, I realized that I was already completely right with God. And this whole struggle that I'd been struggling with to get His favor, to get His acceptance, to get His love, it was already done. Like, I was just standing there all of a sudden with just this revelation washing over me of the fact that God loves me so completely and so abundantly right now, right where I am. I, You know, like... I was like, but Lord, I, I lied today, you know, and I was like, and the Lord just kept washing over me with, I love you, you are perfect based on what, what I did, not based on the works that you try to do, because I was trying to work my way to God all the time, and then God finally, finally got it through my head, I am right with God right now, right where Amen. I am. Amen. And I just feel like everyone here tonight, like you are so precious to the Lord, you are so right with Him. Right where you are Amen. right now. There's no sin that is that is against you. There is no sin that the Lord is holding against you. That's right. You have a clear airway to the heavens. That's right. Amen. Every single one of you, you have a clear airway to the heavens. And the Lord is so proud of you. He smiles at you. He's full of joy over you. And it's nothing we have to work for. And that revelation just rocked my world. I was just it still just rushes over me. Just the Amen. fact that God loves me so completely and so fully right where I am. And it's nothing, there's nothing I can do to make him love me more. It's all, it's complete, it's done. And, and so I got this revelation and I just started getting excited about the Lord. <laughs> and that was something that I wanted my entire life. And I, I never really felt excited about the Lord before. Because I, I grew up in a Christian home. I was saved when I was two years old. And so once I started to get a hold of this revelation of right, you know, I don't have to wait till I die till I die to be perfect, which I used to think. Uh -huh. he, he showed me like in our spirit, he, we are born again. Like how can you be unborn? When we give our lives to the Lord, we are born again. We're born of the spirit of God. We're connected with the Holy Spirit. We're one spirit in him like Jesus prayed in John. Uh -huh. And so once I got a hold of that revelation, the Lord <laughs> gave me another revelation. Um, when Josh got all radical for the Lord, he threw away all of his entertainment. Like, the Lord gave him this radical dream. And he threw away every single movie, every Xbox game. And it was, it was because the, it, he just wanted more of God. So it was like a sacrifice. It was like, I'm going to lay this down on the altar. I'm going to fully like, chase after you. Because it was, at the time, it was kind of an addiction. And so he let go of all of that, and I, I kind of like, I held on to my, <laughs> my chick flicks. I was like, no, you know, you can get rid of all the R-rated movies and all that, but I'm keeping my chick flicks. And, <laughs> and so one night in worship, the Lord, like, r reminded me that I had those, those movies, those romantic movies, and I was like, I, I just felt so moved for the Lord and I, I, when I was worshiping, and I was like, Lord... I don't want the world's view of love anymore. I want you to show me what love is. Nice. Amen. That's and so I went and I got all those chick flicks and I threw them in the trash. And I was like, God, show me what love is. And I was just like rocked in his presence. And then I had forgotten about that. And about maybe a week or two later, the Lord woke me up really early in the morning at like 6 a.m. <laughs> and I'm not normally a, norm a morning person. But I just, I, I was laying there in bed and the sun was shining in my room. And the presence of God was in my room so incredibly intensely. And I felt butterflies in my stomach. And I just felt this overwhelming feeling of being in love. And it was just this feeling like the first time that you, you know, kiss your husband. Or the first time that you hold somebody's hand. Like this butterfly feeling of just like, oh, I'm so in love with you. Like I just had it like just covering me. And the only thing I could say for maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes was just, I love you, 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 I love you. And it was just overwhelming to me that, that the entire day, that whole day, I would just think about that moment and just smile because I finally realized that the Lord felt love for me. Like it wasn't just an intellectual thing. He didn't just like... Well, you know, she's such a mess that I need to die to save her. And, you know, he actually, like, he feels love for us. 
You know, he's, he's so just joyful over us. He loves us. He feels it for us. He's passionate about yeah. us. And that just completely rocked my world. So I just want to pray that over everyone here tonight. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus, I just thank you, Father. I thank you for your, your love, God. I thank you that you just feel so passionately about us, Lord. That it's not just intellectual, Lord, but you just, yeah. your heart is just overflowing. It's just bubbling up with just love, just pure, radical love that's so, so much deeper than any love on this entire earth, Lord. I pray that every single person here will just get a radical outpouring of your love, God. Yeah, that you would meet them right here, right now, Lord. And then they would experience that tangible feeling of your love, Lord, that you love them so much, God. And I just thank you for them, Lord. And I thank you that every person here would just get a radical encounter, Lord, Amen. of how much you just love them, God. I thank Amen. you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Oh, I need to finish the story. <laughs> the Lord reminded me. So the next day I told Josh about this encounter that I had with the Lord. And... Um, we started to worship the Lord, and we both started to feel, you know, when I, whenever I worship God now, I feel this love. I just feel this, like, feeling of being in love. Yes. And I told Josh, and we both just started feeling that. And the next day when we went out to, to go witness, I started feeling it for other people. And it was just, like, yes. this love of the Lord. Like, it's not like he just feels that way about me. He feels yes. that way about every person. That's right about me. And so when we go out and we witness to people, I can feel that love of the Lord. Like, the Lord just intensely loves them. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter what darkness they're in. None of it matters. Like, the Lord sees through all that. He sees straight to the who that he created them to be. And he created them in his image. That's right. And so that's what we're called to do. We're called out to go and love the person and see who God created them to be and love them with that amazing, refreshing, abundant love that God has for us. That's good. Yay. That's awesome. That day was like the day she's talking about. The next day, we are at the mall. We are praying over this song. Uh, homeless lady had a messed up foot and she had a bone sticking out of her shoulder and then we prayed and then the bone slowly started going back in place oh, and then her uh, ankle got feel, uh, healed but it was interesting I started prophesying God's love to her and then God's love literally became a tangible presence in the room like a thick like it was like if love was a substance, that was all around us. And then people started saying that they started feeling like God's presence. As soon as we walked up, they started feeling like just it rocked. We had uh, people that we've been ministering to. We want, there's this group of uh, kids that um, some people considered them like gangs, but they weren't really a gang. They're just a family, like kids that hung out, you know. And they saw us, and this all of a sudden they went up to us, and the, like it was crazy. They ran up to us to pray for them for healing and to pray and minister. Then Chelsea's like got this supernatural boldness, this perfect love cast out fear. And then she has like. Th 13 of them in a circle and she's just preaching identity and preaching the gospel and like we're just sitting back to back just people getting rocked and, and like just adding on time what she's saying just even more about this gospels we can only represent God to others in the way we know him ourselves yes. that's true that's, right. that's true like if you if you don't know how much God loves you how, how can you wow. represent that to somebody else that's right. If you don't really actually believe that God is head over heels in love with you, how can you believe that He's in love with somebody else? You can't. See, if you don't understand God's goodness, like how can you represent Him as good to somebody? See, and I think that's a, a lot. A lot of the issue with a lot of just uh, just people in Christianity is that we have this theology about who God is without the experience of it. Right. It has no life. It has nothing. We have nothing to impart because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When it's what we know of God, we can impart to others. What we experience of God, we can impart to others. You see, it's living life in intimacy and relationship with God. And as we live in that place, we can represent Him to the world around us. Mm -hmm. And He's glorious. He's amazing. Amen. Amen. It's good. So I'm just going to just...
add on to her prayer. <laughs> Thank I'm just going to close with this. The Lord, Father, you're amazing. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, rock our hearts with yes, your Lord. love, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that you just made everything easy, God. You made it just a real relationship with you, God. Living in intimacy with you, God. And it's not about reading our Bible a long times, but it's about connecting with you in the Bible. It's not praying for hours and hours, but connecting with you through our prayers, God. It's, it's all about you. It's all about us connecting with you, God, because you paid such a price for intimacy, God. You gave your life for that love for us, God. Yes, you gave your life to be restored, for us to be restored back in intimacy with you, God. So I just pray that you'll just have the reward you paid for. Yes, Lord. That you just rock us, that you give everybody here, God, if that you'd give them radical encounters with your love. I just release, yes, God. Lord. I just pray, God, a radical encounter of your love in their dreams and their sleep, God. That you just that you captivate them and their minds will be stuck on you regardless of what they're doing, God. That you just be the apple of their eye. That you would just be everything, God. That you would just show them your your goodness, God, and your extravagant love for them. We just thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. That was so good. That was so good. We're gonna get that next week too. In a row. In a row. Uh, that bucket right up there, I like to see it filled so we can give him money. Just plain and simple. Praise the Lord. You know? yeah. So let's bless him. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's worship God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm ready to worship God. Amen. Amen.